Hi everyone, my name is Tuan Nguyen, Product Manager at UiPath. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through how to build a conversational agent in Agent Builder Studio Web. So here I have a UiPath Policy Assistant agent that I've already built. As you can see here, it's equipped with a context granny index to query UiPath HR documents, as well as send an Outlook email. And then in Studio Web itself, here is the agent built. So we're actually gonna rebuild this particular conversational agent from scratch over the next 10 to 15 minutes. First things first, let's go over to the homepage for Studio Web. We're gonna go ahead and click Create New, and then click Agent. First thing you'll see here is a new selection between two different agent types. Autonomous agents are your traditional agents that you've been creating, and the new conversational agents is what we're going to create today. Go ahead and click Conversational Agent, and then we're gonna go ahead and utilize Autopilot to create this agent. We recommend that you use Autopilot to help you configure the system prompt as well as the tools and guide you through the process. So we're gonna go ahead and tell Autopilot that we're gonna create an AI assistant that's gonna help query the UI path documents, specify the documents themselves, as well as allow it to send emails. All right, so let's go ahead and click Generate Agent. Now it's gonna go ahead and utilize Autopod to help us start configuring this agent. While it's doing that, let's go ahead and point out some key differences between autonomous agents and conversational agents. You'll see here for conversational agents, there is no user prompt. That's because at runtime, the user will provide the user prompt. So it's not applicable in this case. Additionally, you'll see when you click Data Manager, there's nothing that actually happens. That's because conversational agents don't provide inputs or outputs at this time. And so we do not use the data manager. One other restriction that we have for public preview is there is no agent health score. We are working on this and it will be available as part of our 2510 GA release. So let's go ahead and take a look at autopilot. As you can see here, it's provided a system prompt. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, this looks pretty good. All right, and so you'll see here it has some recommendations of tools that we should use. So we're gonna go ahead and configure that in a little time. And then here's the context that it's recommended. So what I've gone ahead and done already is actually create a context grinding index for this uh, HR policy context grinding index that we need. As you can see, if you go into Orchestrator, you'll see in the shared folder, I've created a storage bucket for the UiPath HR documents. Here is our PTO guidelines, travel and expense policy, and our holiday calendar. And what I've gone ahead and done is just created an index at the shared folder here as well. Here is the index HR, UiPath HR documents that I've created. And here's the index details. So shared folder, storage bucket, and now I've gone ahead and used the advanced ingestion. This is great for when your documents have things like tables or graphics or diagrams that necessarily can't be read with just plain text. All right, so as you can see here, this context grinding index has already been created. So we're gonna go back into Agent Builder Studio Web and we're gonna go ahead and just add that context here. Here it is, let's go ahead and click on it. Okay, so you can see here, this context grinding index has been added. Let's just go ahead and provide a description so the conversational agent knows when to query this context grinding index. All right, great. Let's take a look at the configurations that we're gonna use here. Semantic is fine, relevant score. I like to actually uh, increase this results to five. So it returns back five pages from each of those documents. And that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and now configure this agent to utilize a tool. So again, we said that we wanted this agent to also be able to send emails on the user's behalf. Let's go ahead and click add tool. Here's an API workflow that I've already wired up. Let's actually go ahead and take a look at that API workflow so you can see what it looks like under the hood. Here is the API workflow that I've created, send email. All right, so if you haven't used API workflows before, we highly recommend it. They are in preview right now, but they're much faster than RPA workflows. Um, so the first thing that I would try to do is try to build any tools that you need to access, let's say underlying integration service connectors using API workflows. So this is a very simple API workflow. The workflow starts. We've pulled in this send email connector. 
And as you can see here, I've already provided uh, some inputs, such as the email, subject, and body as input arguments. And then I've gone ahead and configured these arguments to these fields that they send email activity needs. All right, and then I've just gone ahead and provided a response. So in the event that this is a successful execution, I've just provided a return response to the agent that the email was successfully drafted. One key thing that you'll want to note here is when you utilize a IS connector within an API workflow and you're selecting a connection, please try to provide that connection at a parent folder in which you will deploy your conversational agent. So this is the best practice that we recommend. When you're deploying your conversational agents, create a parent folder in which they'll be um, deployed within. And in that parent folder, go ahead and create all your connections. So if you go into integration service, you'll see that I have a bunch of connections already created at the shared folder level. All right, so here you can see. And that allows all the underlying folders of that shared folder or parent folder to have access to these connections. And so as you can see here, I've created the connections at the shared parent folder level, and then I've deployed my conversational agents underneath it so that they have access to those connections. This allows you to change connections at the parent folder level and to make sure that your end users, when they try to run these conversational agents and use these connections, that they won't fail. So this is actually using a connection that I've created at the shared folder level, as you can see. And this looks all good. And so uh, as you can see here, I've also specified that I want the body of the email to be in HTML format. And then just go ahead and debug it really quickly to make sure it runs. All right. Everything looks good here. Let's go back into the conversational agent that we were building. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and configure this tool here. Uh, for conversational agents, you can use RPA workflows. You can use autonomous agents. You'll actually see all the other conversational agents appear here. Please, at this time, do not select conversational agents because they will not work if you try to call a conversational agent to another conversational agent, but you can call other autonomous agents. Here are the activities that we support that you can call directly without encapsulating them within a RPA workflow or API workflow. And last but not least, the API workflow that we had just created. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you'll see all the information has been pulled in from that API workflow. So it knows how to infer the arguments for each of the email, subject, and body. Let's go ahead and provide a description. The descriptions are important because they allow the conversational agent to know when to select this tool. All right, so everything looks pretty good. Last but not least, if you want to, you can change the model for the conversational agent. We have defaulted it to Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I particularly like Claude 3.5 Sonnet so that I keep it there, but if you want to use any of the other GPT models, you can definitely do so. So now that we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and test out this agent and we'll click debug at the top left. All right, this looks pretty good. So when you click debug and it actually starts up the agent, you'll see this debug chat available at design time. Here you can actually converse with your agent just as your users would at runtime. So we're gonna go ahead and query it for the holidays within the US. So as you can see here, it's gonna query that context grounding index. If we click on the tool itself, you can expand it, see the trace view, the inputs sent to the context grounding index, as well as the outputs, such as the chunks that are returned back to context to formulate a response. As you can see, it's gonna go ahead and formulate a response that we found from that context grounding index. And then at the top right, I can actually add this particular conversation to our evaluation set. So I'll go ahead and do that. Now let's go ahead and ask a follow-up question. All right, and so as you can see here, it's gonna query context running again. This time it's gonna query it for Romanian holidays and then return back the response.
All right, so once this is finished, let's add this to the evaluation set as well. And then from these two tabs, we can look at history of any previous debug chat runs that we've had, as well as evaluations directly from here. We're gonna go ahead and stop this evaluation or the debug. debug. And then in your evaluation set, you can see both of those conversations brought in. And so here is the very first conversation that we brought in as the evaluation test. There was no conversation history because there was the first thing that we asked, which we're testing against. And then we provided the agent response in the debug chat as the expected agent response. For evaluations, we support um, default evaluators such as deterministic, LLM as a judge, as well as trajectory. And you can also simulate tool calls in here if you want to. Let's take a look at the second evaluation test. So as you can see, this one actually had a previous turn, which was the question about US holidays. And so we've provided that as conversation history. And then we're actually asking for the very uh, last user prompt, which is how about Romania? And we're testing it against the last agent response. If I wanted to go in and modify the conversation, you can definitely do so from right here. All right, and this allows you to basically progress and iterate on your agent without introducing regressions. So once we're done, what we're gonna go ahead and do is rename our solution and our agent so we can tell what it is. All right, let's go ahead and rename the agent as well. And let's go ahead and publish it to Orchestrator. All right, so once the solution has been created, let's go ahead and click Check Package. We'll take us directly to Solution Management in the Orchestrator. All right, so here is our UiPath HR Assistant. The package is ready. Let's go ahead and deploy this. We're going to go ahead and choose that shared folder. Again, we want to choose the shared folder because that's where our connections were made for our tools. And we're going to just install it as a subfolder in that shared parent folder. I will leave the root folder name as the same as the solution. Let's go ahead and deploy this solution. All right, there is a small workaround that you'll have to have. Anytime you deploy a solution with a context grounding index, you'll see this validation error. You can go ahead and clear it by just clicking on edit, use existing, and then deploy. All right, now your deployment's in process. You can actually view it and monitor it from here. What you'll need to go ahead and do is press refresh to make sure when that status is completed. All right, it looks like now it's successfully deployed. You'll see if I expand out the shared folder, you will see this UiPath HR Assistant now deployed here. Key things to note when it comes to conversational agents, conversational agents in their folder themselves, they need access to an unattended robot and also a serverless machine template. And so if you go in here, you'll actually see them already configured. Let's see here, machines access, here's this max robot we've already configured, which is a robot account for unattended robot type and the machine itself, the serverless machine template. It's already here because I've deployed these at the shared folder level. This is also another benefit of deploying your conversational agents as a subfolder of a parent folder, because then it will already take and, and receive any configuration permissions that you need. And so at the share, shared folder level, what we've gone ahead and done is provided a serverless machine template, and we've selected to propagate this down. Okay, so that's propagated down to all the subfolders. Now we've also provisioned a unintended robot, which has now been propagated down to these conversational agents. So that just makes sure that uh, you don't run into any issues when it comes to configurations. Last thing to note, right before you go ahead and utilize your agent, you want to go into the conversational agent that you've just created. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tools that it's executing. And so here we have the send Outlook email as well as the HR assistant. And we're just going to go ahead and make sure that this send Outlook email tool is once again just using the connection that we specified. So let's go ahead and select the connection and we're going to update this. And then we can go ahead and go into agents, instance management, and test out this conversational agent. Here is that HR assistant agent. Let's click chat now. Your agent's going to spin up, it should take about five seconds, but after the fact, after you go ahead and spin up the agent, it should be pretty quick. All right, so 
we're going to go ahead and email the travel policy to London to myself. So it's broken down this task. It's going to first look at the context grinding index using a tool call, and then it's going to email that information to me using the send email API workflow we configured. All right, so it looks like it's executed successfully. Um, so there you have it, a very short overview of how you can build a very simple conversational agent that helps you query your documents as well as perform actions. We're looking forward to seeing what you build. Please provide us feedback through the Insider Portal. We're looking forward to chatting with you. And we will have conversational agents in GA at 2510, and we look forward to speaking with you.